In this video, we're going to look at plant responses to temperature change. Plants must also maintain a constant internal environment just like animals. Changes in temperature in the natural environment of plants affect both their functioning and their growth. Maintenance of a relatively stable internal environment is just an Im as important for plant metabolism as it is for animals. And for plants, they have a, many more factors that comes into play because plants cannot move. So their roots actually rooted in the ground. Because they can't move, they can't go to the shade, they can't find more warmth, they can't find more sun. So ultimately, wherever the seed lands and starts to grow, they might have other competition of plants that are around, but they're competing for things like sunlight, okay, and water resources, nutrient resources. So plants do also need to maintain a constant internal environment to survive. Plants respond to changes in light, water availability, and temperature. Like I said, with light, when the sun comes in, all plants need some form of light. Water availability might be in the soil or it could be in the surrounding environment. They might be watered every day and be waiting for that water source. And temperature. So within a certain temperature range, plants can survive. But if it is in extreme environments, plants will likely die. All of which are linked. So light, water, availability and temperature are all linked. Since heat is often associated with light, for example, the radiant energy of sunlight. Most plants have a growth season and a life cycle that follow the seasonal temperature variations of their environment. Low availability of water may also be associated with very cold temperatures, since frozen water, ice and snow is not available for the use by plants. That's the same as any organism, including humans. If you're in a cold environment like the snow, and if you do not have water, Eating the snow will not help. It's the same with plants. Eating the snow or consuming the snow is not going to be a water source for them because your body is actually working hard and the plant needs to work hard to bring it, to make it into water. You need to heat that snow up, turn it into water before you consume it. And that is how your body and plants will actually absorb the water. Temperatures above 40 degrees may cause damage to the proteins and those above 75 degrees to chlorophyll pigment within the plant. Now, desert plants can withstand a lot higher temperatures than alpine plants, for example. And desert plants like cacti can survive within a higher temperature range of 40 degrees Celsius. Since plants cannot move into the shade, they tend to have a stronger physiological and structural adaptations. We're going to be looking at both structural and physiological adaptations now. So a structural adaptation here, reflective leaf surfaces that reduce the amount of radiation absorbed can help keep a plant cool in hot conditions. In this plant here, you can actually see that it's shiny and its leaf is waxy. So go into your environment, maybe at home, and find your leaves. If it is like a shiny or waxy or even a thicker leaf, it's more protected from the sun. If it has no waxy surface on it at all, and if it's like a soft, it will not be able to withstand really extreme temperatures. So leaves might be light in color so that they can reflect light. They can be deep in color to absorb light. Uh, they can be silvery col colored or have a waxy or shiny surface to protect itself in its environment. Evaporative cooling. Just like humans, we sweat to cool us down. Plants also have the same thing. So they have evaporative cooling, which is loss of water via transpiration. Now, what is transpiration? On top of a leaf, we have the waxy surface. On the underside of the leaf, there's stomata. Stomata are like little mouths, and these are examples of stomata right here. They the stomates have little mouths and when they open, and this one here is open, it actually allows water to escape. They're breathing at the same time and plants are the opposite to humans. They breathe in carbon dioxide and release oxygen. So as it's open, they're breathing in and they're losing water. In a hot environment, they lose quite a bit of water. So they might decide when to open those stoma stomates. 
they may not open it at the middle time of the day because it's going to be too hot and they're going to lose too much water. Or if it's extremely hot, they may decide to open it up to cool the plant down. This decreases the internal temperature. However, if water is not readily available, it can also kill the plant. Obviously, desert plants have stronger adaptations to the hotter environments. Hot areas are often dry, compromising evaporative cooling. A plant needs to strike a fine balance between the risk of excess water loss during cooling versus heat buildup during water conservation. Some plants can also wilt. So wilting, some plants can wilt during the day instead, which decreases the surface area of flowers and leaves to the sun. What does this mean? If you're sun baking, you might lie down and that actually increases the surface that is exposed to the sun. If you stand up and the sun is above you, only really your head, your shoulders and your nose can get that sun. So by wilting, if a plant, if a leaf actually has its leaves out like this, it will absorb more sun. If it wilts, it means that the leaves drop. By dropping, it means that it's only exposing a small amount of the leaf to the sun, to direct sunlight, which means that it's, it's a physiological response to get less sun so they're able to survive during the hot environments. If water is readily available, this is temporary, and if not, it can actually sacrifice the plant. Roses is a good example of that. They do need water and they do wilt. However, if they don't have the water, they will die after wilting. You'll actually notice that if you get a bunch of celery and if you put it in your fridge and it's in your fridge for a week, you get it out and you notice that the, the leaves are wilted. If you cut the bottom part of the celery and put it in some water, it's a really good experiment where you can see within a couple of hours, those leaves are not as wilted. They actually absorb the water and they suck up the water from the bottom of near the roots. So leaf orientation. Plants change the orientation of their leaves to decrease the surface area exposed to the sun at the hottest part of the day. Now this is a eucalyptus plant and it doesn't wilt. So the leaves don't actually change any shape or, or form, but they do fall. And by falling again, that decreases the surface area exposed to the sun. Plants responding to excessive temperature like fires may die, especially non-woody plants. However, they leave dormant seeds with thick protective seed coats. Seed dispersal in some Australian plants is simulate, stimulated by the extreme heat of fire. Banksia, hackia, and some eucalyptus plants bear fruits with hard woody cases that are not dropped from the parent plant. But the heat from a fire stimulates the fruits to open and the seeds are then released. So only with fire are seeds released. Some of these seeds need fire as a trigger to germinate. Now germinate is a biological word. It means that it's starting to sprout. So the seeds go into the ground and when the seeds just start to grow, that is called germination. Some plants may die above ground, leaving roots such as rhizomes, bulbs or tubers to survive underground. And when favorable conditions return, then they can sprout. Leaf fall in summer. You'll find that some eucalypts or even some plants may actually drop some of their leaves during summer. And it's during the dry season in hot climates. And the aim is to reduce the surface area exposed to heat. And it also decreases the metabolic processes of the plant because they don't need to keep up with all of their leaves. They can drop some and that actually allows them to continue to survive in summer. This also reduces the risk of losing too much water by transpiration. Temperature is one factor that controls developmental changes in a plant's life cycle, from germination through to flowering and seed dispersal. In Australia, too high of a temperature during flower formation produces a poor wheat crop because pollen formation is very temperature sensitive. When the first Australians started to bring wheat to Australia, we actually got the wheat crop from England. The problem with this is that wheat had a different adaptation. In England, they have a cold, wet environment and it's constantly cold and wet. Um, and they don't have a lot of sun in England. In summer, it's quite the opposite. So when we brought that wheat crop to Australia, of course, it's not going to survive. The crop that did survive was the crop that actually um, came from a hotter environment. 
Okay, leaf fall in autumn. Deciduous trees. So we do have deciduous trees that actually drop their leaves in autumn. Many trees use their leaves during autumn and the cold winter months when resources, for example, the sun and water, are not as readily available. It allows them to survive not only extremely low temperatures, but also the water shortages and lower availability of sunlight. So by dropping their leaves, they're not having to give sugars to those leaves to survive, and it actually helps them in winter. For example, the beech tree found in Tasmania. Some plants have organic antifreeze, and normally in cold conditions, water between cells freezes, first posing the greatest risk of damage for plants. Some plants that live in extremely cold environments produce this antifreeze which, substance, which reduces the temperature at which the cytoplasm or cell sap freezes. Frost during periods of new growth may damage plants, but many plants have leaves that are frost tolerant. For example, after frost, the leaves of camellias appear semi-transparent, but on thawing, they return back to normal. Plants may alter their growth rate. Active plant growth can occur within the range of 5 degrees to 45 degrees, or in tropical areas, the plant growth may cease at 15 degrees Celsius, but they can might be able to survive, but they're not growing within um, a temperature range that's below the 15 degrees. Fertilization. Now some plants actually flower in response to low temperatures. So for example, the tulip bulbs must be exposed between six weeks to three months of extremely cold temperatures um, to flower. Now Australian gardeners often mimic this effect by putting the seeds um, and the, into the refrigerator and by doing that they put it in there between the six and three month period to make sure that in spring they will actually flower. In summary, plants must also maintain a relatively stable internal environment. Since plants cannot move, they tend to have stronger physiological and structural adaptations. For heat, some adaptations include wilting and dropping leaves in summer. For cold, some include frost tolerance and being deciduous. This concludes looking at homeostasis within plant species.